I'm Amanda Fancy. I'm the dealer owner of Gals Home Hardware and Furniture. We've been at this location for about a year. We started in 1848, uh, way back when. Um, this is our fifth location, so um, you know we've we've never uh, have left the town limits. So when we're looking to build this location. You know we had lots of opportunity to potentially look at um, you know outside of the town limits, uh, but it was really key for us to be um, and continue to be um, a growing business in Bridgewater. Bridgewater, Nova Scotia is unique. We have a beautiful countryside. Our, our town is 7,500 people, but then, you know, our customer reach is about 45,000. So, you know, we're talking about lots of small communities, um, you know, hidden treasures. There's huge opportunity here, and I think that it's certainly worthwhile to, uh, to make the visit, uh, make the call, do some inquiring visits, because it certainly is uh, somewhere where I think there would be some uh, you know, strong investment opportunities for sure. My name is Joey Richard. I come from Quebec, Montreal. Um, I've studied opera at the Montreal Conservatory of Music, so this is where I've learned about Italian, the language, and the food. And my passion just became bigger and bigger for food. I've been cooking for 20 years, almost. I opened a family business, but the only thing I forgot is that my family is still in Montreal so I'm like you know I'm trying I make new friends I, I I'm building this thing but it is a family business here my chef is like my brother his wife is like my sister so I mean I, I recreated a family uh, environment we do the real recipes starting from the real ingredients and for Italian food what the secret is few ingredients and very fresh so each recipe would be like three four ingredients maximum but i mean it's just the best ingredients and makes it so delicious if you think that it's impossible to have your own business i'm the living proof that it is possible people want us to thrive we work together so it, everybody helps each other if you want to be part of a community it is the community to be part of My name is Joel Holland. I'm the owner and operator of Manitou Athletics. I found the opportunity, started this gym in my parents' garage, and now we are currently in an 8,600 square foot facility. A lot of people come here because of the community. The, the things that we offer here are different than a normal gym. It's an open atmosphere where you come in, the music's played over the loudspeakers, not in your ears. You don't put earbuds in and uh, just walk around from one machine to the other. You, uh, you focus on yourself, but at the same time you get to meet new people. We have three floors, uh, which we do CrossFit, uh, boot camps, athletic training, and personal training. We have so many other businesses that are growing our economy and, uh, and feeding into it becoming more populated. A place where people actually stay as opposed to leave. growing. We're getting bigger and um, a lot of people are on the same push to become uh, a, a better Bridgewater. I love this place. It's my home um, and there is no other place that I want would want my business to be.
<clears throat> All right, good evening, everyone. I will call this uh, special meeting of Town Council to order. And as always, the Town of Bridgewater is located in Mi'kmaq, the unceded and ancestral territory of the Mi'kmaq people. And it's our privilege to be here. This is a special council meeting because it's uh, just a one topic uh, agenda, and that is budget, as council continues to deliberate both the uh, operating capital budget. And so without further ado, we will jump right into it. Um, and I'll turn it over to staff to lead us through um, the 2024-25 budget. Okay, so. Uh -oh. oh, I guess I need a motion to approve the agenda. Probably. The one item, so <laughs> move by I'll Deputy move Mayor to Fisher. approve the agenda. <laughs> Seconded by Councillor Thorburn. All Thank those you. in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Now we're staff. <laughs> So at our last uh, meeting, Council, we presented to Council the operating budget um, in detail explaining what, what we will, Council will be delivering through this budget, if approved, the changes to the baseline or your core in terms of what's been taken out, what's been increased, and then what's new in terms of additions, so what new initiatives would be undertaken. Uh, we then talked about the rates, and we had a brief discussion with respect to capital. The operating budget is $31,991,586 as proposed. That's a 11% increase from last year. And we have increases in revenue. Uh, there's a lot of uh, larger projects in there with grant funding and, and, and a tax increase as well in terms of revenue to offset that. And the capital budget is $8.3 million. The tax rates are proposed to remain the same as last year at $1.85 per $100 of assessment. The commercial rate remains the same at $4.07 per $100. And the LCLC special purpose tax remains at $0.06 cents per $100 of assessment. <coughs> and the LCLC tax is proposed to um, see its final year in 27-28. We also proposed to Council some changes to the wastewater rate, and those were per some previous discussions that Council had with respects to how we fund waste, wastewater. The intention is to have <coughs> the wastewater rate as close to full cost recovery as possible. That includes operating, which includes your debt cost, your principal and your interest, and it includes the funding of capital that we wouldn't be borrowing for. So the residential rate is proposed at 518 and the additional dwelling unit at 466. So a little bit more of an increase there to, to bring it closer to the residential rate. Hotels are $1,109 plus $100 per gas unit. Hospitals are proposed to increase uh, to 10,000 plus $100 per patient bed. And council did have some questions with respects to the hospital. And their, and their consumption of water, using the, me the method of water in equals water out, um, what would be the rate if we looked at water consumption. So uh, we do have a slide that we'll show you that provides that calculation, because there was a question um, about a number that was presented by some consultants several years ago, about four or five years ago, that seems to be um, perhaps not <coughs> necessarily reflective of what the meters are are telling us. Large industrial has increased to 20,000 and that's from a $1,109 rate to 20,000. And education and large grocery and car wash has increased to 4,000. And then <coughs> commercial and other remains at 1,109 plus 998 per additional user. So that is the proposed water rates that would uh, support the, the budget for your wastewater and allow for some funding to reserves to help offset future capital as well. And through your budget document, um, all your strategic priorities that Council identified through their strategic priority setting um, sessions are being implemented. Um, <clears throat> so we weren't proposing to go through all of the lovely slides again to uh, go over the detail with respect to the budget unless Council wishes us to do that. Uh, certainly, if you have questions, we can focus on some of those slides for sure. Um, council, councillors were encouraged to ask some questions, if you had some, in advance of this meeting. Um, to, then we can provide you with a little bit of information. And there were three areas that came up, or three topics that came up, whether through email or just conversation. 
One was a question with respect to our capital budget, and it had to do with the LaHave Street and the <coughs> um, Aberdeen Victoria Bridge intersection, mm -hmm. and whether or not the, as you're coming from Silvers Hill, the right turning lane, the queue, the queue that could be widened or lengthened so as to eliminate the, um, the back of a traffic that happens there if you have a lot of cars turning right and, or going straight, it backs up <coughs> traffic. So we did have that in the capital budget, but it was a few years out. And engineering also had in the capital budget in more recent years, we were looking at the old bridge in LaHave Street intersection, and I believe design was in this year. And uh, so from discussions with uh, our director of engineering, Matt Davison, he suggested that we could switch those priorities around and look at the LaHave Victoria Road um, intersection um, before doing the old bridge in LaHave Street. So what that would entail is design in one year and construction in the next. So it would just be switching out those, those projects and <coughs> Matt felt that we could probably keep the budget the same, the design number, and I believe it was 75000 in the capital budget for that design work this year. So if council wants, we can switch them out. Just letting you know that. I see a lot of people nodding their heads. I think any one of us going down that road know that there's a long queue of cars. I know, Councilor Torben, this is the, the one that you raised. Yes, yeah. And I was over the other day and they were lined up past Elm Street. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like it's a, a lot busier now that the traffic lights are in there and people are choosing to go that way and, and yeah. return that way. So yeah. That's why I brought it up. And, and this would also look at the traffic signals and right. do some improvements yeah. there yeah. as well. So, so it's, it's not just the changing yeah. of the queue to make no. it longer, but also you have to deal with the intersection as well. So yeah. Yeah. Just, nope. uh, yeah. just to, that's okay. Um, so staff are just reviewing uh, some of the questions that were submitted. So one that uh, Councilor Thorburn raised was, uh, as you know, in this year's capital budget was to deal with the signalized intersection at Old Bridge in La Have. Yes. But swapping that out and instead doing some design work to extend the queue on La Have as you turn onto the new bridge as well as the, um, mm -hmm. the intersection there and that there would be no, no material impact to this year's budget to do that. Just swap out the project. Yeah. So yeah. we'll leave, flag that. So <coughs> before you approve the capital budget, if you want to make that change, we can. Yeah. Uh, Kinsman Field <coughs> and the accessibility piece was raised as a question with respect to is there any funding in the, the budget to do that. Um, discussing that with engineering and Director Matt's here so he can speak to this as well. The solution um, is a little bit more complex than a railing. The railing would probably not achieve a lot. Um, there's uh, uh, <coughs> solutions that could be looked at, but it's being suggested that those are a couple hundred thousand dollars to do it properly and make it truly accessible. Um, so what's being suggested is that if council wishes to see that move, that we would bring in um, an expert to do that design. Design it one year construct it the next given the dollar value and that would ensure that we had a workable solution it would enable for some engagement of stakeholders so that we could ensure that it worked for those who use the field and have an interest in how accessibility is built into that um, the railing would just be literally um, a solution that might not <coughs> necessarily be a solution but create more of an issue so that's um, What's being suggested there is that we could add in some funding, given that it's suggested that it's about a quarter probably, and it's, I mean, this is just looking at based on experience with other projects, it's suggested that it could be up to a quarter of a million dollars to do it right. And that's, um, <coughs> that's as I say, a rough estimate, but design's usually around 10%. So if we put 20 to $25,000 for design to do a proper design, then we could have that designed this year, the solution select it, designed, and get ready for construction in the following year, if that's something council wanted to do. Um, <clears throat> then there was also a question about um, multicultural events and whether or not um, the town could look at um, providing some funding for some multicultural events. So the, that this is not in the budget. I believe the PRC committee had some conversations about this and they were going to have that discussion with our existing committees, uh, uh, Canada Day and Christmas on the Hay <coughs> committees, to see 
what may be possible in terms of additional events, but it would require additional funding. And um, so <clears throat> there has been nothing in the budget for that. We thought perhaps they could apply under the grants to organizations. <clears throat> the deadline has come and gone for grants to organizations, but it doesn't mean that you couldn't look at something outside of that. Or if you wanted to provide additional grant funding for this, then that's an option as well. But it's, we recognize that's a whole new topic to council because it hasn't made its way here yet. But it was, it was something that was discussed and a question that was raised. <clears throat> and that's it for questions. That was brought up uh, outside of the meeting that we indicated we'd bring back. So there may be more questions tonight. Yeah, so we can, we can either talk about these before we move on to other questions. As I said, I saw a lot of heads nodding about the, the change from the old bridge intersection to the moving towards the, um, mm -hmm. the Victoria Road, Aberdeen, La Have intersection. So I guess mm -hmm. the first question to council is, would you like to swap those out so the design of that is done this year? Um, again, there's no impact on the bottom line of the budget, but yeah. it's a change, sure. uh, it's a, be a change of direction for, for staff. Yep. Um, yes? Same. Yeah, I'm absolutely in favor of that. And I would like to mention, just in the longer term capital budget, I wonder if we want to move, attempt to bump up the other side of the new bridge. That's quite a number of years down the road, I think. I don't know. So in, I the know, logistics yeah. around that. So staff, we're looking at timing not, that. Not to this year. Oh, no. no. <laughs> um, <coughs> the original intention was to time that with the the uh, King Street Phase 3 or the downtown the Phase 3 plan and the improvements that were going to be happening on King Street as well as development that was proposed to have be occurring in that area. But it was mainly about lining it with that Phase 3 work so that um, you were kind of doing that all around the same time. And if development activity were proposed, you wouldn't want to put something in only to have to change it again. So that's why it, it was pushed out quite a, quite a ways, I believe. So it's not proposed in this year's capital plan and you're suggesting that no. we don't necessarily. So there is an opportunity. We look at our 10-year capital plan every year. So we could certainly look at that to see if there's uh, changes that could be made there <coughs> for the future yeah. years. Any other thoughts on the swapping of those? <coughs> any, any objections to swapping those out? No? Okay, so mm -hmm. when we get to the capital budget, we'll take that switch as well. My questions relate more to the, uh, to the Kinsman Field one. Uh, I know Council McDonald, you've had some conversations with folks about accessibility and the, of the Kinsman ball field. And so I guess my only hesitation in putting aside 20 or 25 thousand dollars to do a design of something that's potentially a quarter million dollars is don't you think the first stop should be engaging with baseball mm -hmm. to make sure that we don't design something that then they don't yep. want to use like I know they thought or oh, a railing would be a quick fix and I know staff said railing doesn't solve it and actually could make it worse in some ways but mm -hmm. I think there's Probably more than one. Yeah, so that option. that would this uh, looking at just putting funds in the budget this year would provide for design yeah. would provide that time to do that stakeholder engagement. Okay. Yeah. yeah, before before we would uh, select a design and, and spend the money on it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Councilor Call off. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about uh, spending twenty five thousand dollars on a design for something that. I'm not sure we're prepared to pay a quarter million dollars. I don't, I'm not sure I want to start going down that road. Um, there might be something less informal we could do with consulting stakeholders and uh, without spending too much money. One, I mean, I'd want to hear from stakeholders, but one of the ideas that I think Matt had was some sort of a accessible platform at the top of the street. I don't know if that's doable, that's but that... That's where that um, kind of... That might Why be, that's to me, that to would that be a number. good solution. Um, if people like to sit up there yeah. anyway. Um, <coughs> and, then, anyway. and Matt can certainly speak to that, but I believe that's where that number is arising from. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's not, a, it's not a simple yeah, okay. build. 
so I'll profess I don't go to the Kinsman Field a heck of a lot. <laughs> uh, but um, I did today to get a better feel of what I've, I've come to understand what people normally do. Uh, so the sit behind the guardrail. I'm very concerned with slope stability along mm -hmm. uh, that section of Crescent Street. So my concern mainly is if we do build anything, having somebody come in and making sure that it is stable. Um, there was talk years prior um, that uh, to do much uh, akin to what's at King Street Court uh, with that wooden structure or switchback. So that's where I'm getting the, the solution. That's the only thing on paper that has been really discussed before, and I believe that was around $120,000 in 2007. So if we're doing something like that again, I'm just using that as uh, ballpark um, to do the viewing <coughs> platform. Um, then it's in that area where the st slope is not that stable and a few of the uh, there's some catch basin leads in that same area so mm -hmm. needs a little bit more investigation still I think not my idea in my idea actually it was uh, another staff members um, and it's based on his experience at the park where people normally sit um, staff will be um, you know uh, will engage with baseball but also we we have our accessibility coordinator who has been a, a valuable resource so to see what uh, she would recommend beyond the railing because uh, we are looking at possibly trying to do a meandering pathway to see mm -hmm. if we can get the grades less than what they are now but it really uh, the difficulty is with the trees we don't certainly want to cut any of them down um, but uh, we're trying to work and it's quite wet along that bottom slope mm -hmm. too uh, so working with all of that I'm just I was a little concerned to cut tonight making a commitment to something that I need to put more investigation in so hopefully with uh, the allotment that has been suggested by me uh, by myself that it gives us the ability to still look to see if there is another solution although I'm thinking that if there was a another solution it would have been probably achieved by now but uh, hopefully we can find something else uh, that will get us the grant the accessibility because they really like right behind the guardrail and they can see home plate they can see the entire field and it's unobstructed mm. uh, problem is is when you look right down there I'd be very mm. concerned somebody would fall over so uh, hopefully we can come up with something in that area for viewing but it doesn't get them uh, down to um, some of the anecdotal information for me it doesn't get them down to the ground level where they also want to be so I still need to cross that barrier of getting them down on on uh, on the field so I don't know if that answers your question but that's my thought process from today at least Councilor McDonald. Is that dollar amount because we don't have the staff resources to put into that investigative investigation work right now or did that include that investigation on the staff's part and then a design uh, so I'm not it I guess really it's just mainly for the allowance for after staff can complete their touching base with the the, the associations uh, talking with the our accessibility coordinator to come up with okay now we have that game plan now we're going to design so it's really only for uh, to have a third party to come in and help us with that solution uh, which I uh, we're trying to avoid those long meandering wooden structures because we do have to maintain them in the future as well so mm -hmm. whatever we can do yeah. without doing that that would be long term better for us all yes. would it make any sense to do kind of the exploration this year and commit to budget next year assuming we find something that's reasonable I mean I don't think accessibility is going to be a cheap venture when we look at any facility or park or something it's always going to be a pretty big price tag because we're restructuring what we already have mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's going to be cheap but um, to your point if you haven't had time to look at it and really wrap your head around it we don't want to jump into it either and do it wrong <laughs> I, I would say that uh, in, in what I would expect to be uh, the order of events uh, I would meet with some of the uh, the parties um, as well I'll probably come back to Tammy and, and likely uh, with uh, a potential solution that we want to proceed with mm -hmm. and then council can likely pr give me direction if they would like to proceed in that manner hopefully I can give you a better number than what I'm quoting tonight yeah. <clears throat> okay. But we can certainly come back with whatever we do find, and uh, yeah, I mean, if council's not um, eager to commit the funds to design without kind of understanding what that solution could be, um, then you could always make an adjustment and fund from reserve if you don't want to wait the following year, or we can budget for that in the following year. Mm -hmm. Main thing for for staff, I, I, I certainly didn't want to. Um, 
uh, give you the expectation that we could probably build something this year. Right. Uh, that's, that Absolutely. was my main. Hopefully, we have enough time to investigate, talk with the stakeholders, and then come back with, with I hope, a, you know, a better solution cost-wise than what's mm -hmm. been presented tonight. Well, in our experience is when you engage stakeholders, or their understanding, right. Right, especially if you engage them and tell them this could be a quarter of a million dollar solution, I think they're going to come back and say, we understand. So, uh, Councillor Caldwell, then Councillor Dorman. Yeah. I like Councillor McDonald's suggestion to, I'd like to fully understand the issue, talk to the stakeholders, and then come back to Council with some funding for a, a plan. So I, I prefer not to put it in the budget at the moment. And then if need be, take it out of reserves. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Thurman? I agree completely, and I'm glad you got the accessibility part of it, because everything we do has to have accessibility involved. And, uh, that's an act we have to follow, so that, that's very keen, and, and thank you for including that, Matt. Well. Other questions on that one? Okay, or on any of the other items that the CAO has brought forward so far? Um, there. Can I, is it okay to go ahead a couple pages? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just I, had are you just like bring up like new new questions or things? Yeah, yeah. yeah just a general question about sure. the uh, Bridgewater Memorial Arena de redevelopment. Yeah. Uh, we have allocated ninety thousand <coughs> uh, for the exterior. Um, I know it's been brought up before about the parking lot, and I'm wondering if any money's been allocated for that, or is this just exterior of the building itself? Budget. I believe it's just the exterior of the building itself. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if any plans of patching the parking lot were There's concerns. No. I don't believe you. Do you have funding in the budget for patchwork? No, not for not this, this year. year. Okay. This is where we have the farmers market there. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. If, uh, if council wanted to include funding for patching. Good question. I wasn't prepared for it. No, um, and I and <laughs> sorry for not so, asking no, before, no. but it just prompted when there was allocation there for the for the exterior. If we had looked at the parking lot or um, any other work that I, I know some gardens work has been done, um, just any future plans with. The actual I'd have to go back to the 10 year capital plan, but I know that it has <laughs> been I, in anticipation of, of this question or just do in the long term plans for the BMA. We did include parking lot improvements. Mm -hmm. uh, I just can't quote the number. That's terrible. I can't remember the numbers. That's okay. But it, it was, uh, it is included, the budget it is substantial. Like, uh, I don't think the parking lot is at a point that patching will do. Okay. Uh, we it need to put a, a kind of a a regroup on yeah. that one and start doing in, in kind of major sections um, or at least amounts, uh, especially where the higher traffic will be. Uh, so I know it's in the tenure capital plan. Um, okay. One could be brought forward, but I just don't have that number of what was uh, what was included. So I'd have to go back to my computer or uh, for teams to, to see what was in there, but okay. it is in there. Yeah. Uh, it's just that it was not a, a 10,000, it was more like $100,000 for repaving okay. a larger good portion large, of that parking lot. To do it right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this question relates to uh, the old arena and also the Kinsman Field. So the, the portable lights. So yeah. we did mention that if we had portable lights, we may be able to use them at the old arena if there were nighttime events. Um, yeah, they're, they're able to be used. We got them, that's, they're portable so they can be moved yeah. around to different events. Yeah. And so I guess my other question is, are the users of the Kinsman Field on board with the portable lights, namely the, the Football Association? So I, uh, I, I was delayed in getting a response back uh, to one of the main user groups. Uh, so I did provide some feedback. Uh, they were mainly concerned about setup uh, and what um, setup, how long, how many lights they requested to have additional lights uh, because I believe uh, they quoted the eight lights. I think I quoted eight lights in the budget. Uh, it was good for a 60 by 40 yard area, which is only enough for one team to practice. I was unaware that they actually have two, two teams practicing at once. Um, so they requested the, they didn't request, but they suggested their, the lighting was insufficient for to extend practice times for the amount of 
players on the field. Um, that was noted. Uh, I didn't change the budget to reflect those comments yet because there was a little bit of back and forth, but I was <coughs> delayed getting a response back, so I haven't got a response back to my responses yet. Um, so in terms of what I, the, the flavor of those comments, they weren't necessarily opposed, just wanted to know, you know, were they going to be rented out to other organizations, were they town assets, how, uh, who was going to make sure they were going to charge. So a lot of it I kept referring to, that would be a procedure we have to develop, waivers we'd have to have signed, uh, but nothing I've received, unfortunately, to, to my issue of not getting back to them soon enough uh, to get any feedback from them. But they, they will be town assets to yes. go to Councillor Caldwell's yeah. point when there's a farmer's market on a Saturday evening yep. and there's no football practice on a Saturday evening if they want to do a night event. They could use the yeah. sign the lights out and use the lights. Uh, that was the, uh, yeah. that's what staff envisioned, uh, as well as not just Kinsman Field uh, or uh, the Hay Ball <laughs> Fields or, or the Hay Fields or, or anything of uh, either a town function or, or an event that the town sponsored in some way. Other questions? Ask your questions, Councilor McDonald. Can we touch on the funds for cultural celebrations? Yeah. yeah. So just to kind of give some background, at, uh, uh, the Parks and Recreation Advisory, um, it was kind of it was discussed that we fund Canada Day, um, Christmas on the La Have um, as community celebrations, and there are local groups who are um, hosting community events to celebrate holidays that aren't traditionally celebrated in Bridgewater. Uh, there's been a huge response and huge growth in those, those celebrations, a lot of eagerness to, to grow that in the community. Um, and they're, they've kind of expressed some need for, for some support and some, some financial support to, to keep those going and to grow them. Um, so the Parks and, Recre Parks and Recreation Committee um, had kind of thrown around ideas of the town providing some funding in recognition of uh, the cultural diversity and the, the holidays and celebrations. Um, and I, I, I don't think that we really specifically said it needs to be a grant or how, I, I don't think we discussed how that should be set up. Maybe there's a few dollars that can be pulled out of Canada Day or Christmas on the La Have. I don't think they're looking for huge amounts of money, you know, maybe $500 to help with a, a celebration to pay the, um, for, for the venue or something to make it possible. So it was kind of in recognition of the fact that there's a, a, a very, rich cultural diversity growing and celebrations happening that the community is very excited about and um, will, uh, a willingness on the town's part to uh, put some funds behind a variety of those type of events. So, so to that, if it's, if it's $500 for an event here or there, we, we do have provision to yeah. do, like we, we so I'm looking at Patrick, sorry, we do that sometimes, do we not? When it's an amount like that, I think I thought it was we're looking for like five thousand dollars or large so we can be a sponsor like there's sponsorship yeah. opportunities and things like that otherwise it's a grant unless we're hosting it ourselves okay yeah <clears throat> so i think there i think there's all there's mechanisms in place to absolutely mm -hmm. sp like sponsorships a, a great one right. and i know we've done a few events like that um and then if mm -hmm. it's over what we would normally do for a sponsorship. Right. So if there were grant. four or five events in a year that came and asked for, you know, two hundred or five hundred dollars, could that could that budget support that? So our sponsorship budget's around twenty five hundred is a pad or a little bit more. Yeah. Pretty. Yeah. It's it's so that that has its usual takers in a, in a year, right? Yeah, and it really depends on the opportunity that's being presented um, as well. So, for example, um, if we didn't have money left in the sponsorship budget to support a specific event, um, we also have advertising budgets. So if we were to partner with an organization and have the town of Bridgewater as a name presenting sponsor and we have signage on site and that kind of thing, then that's an eligible advertising expense for us too. So there are a couple of different avenues to support events like that outside of the grants organization's yes. process. Just as a side note, so I don't forget later, is that something that we could put in the, the bridge or something so that people are aware that there's access for those type of events? Yeah, I'm absolutely. Sure that that's they, if that council's in, interested in doing that, sure, we could. Uh, we it could. meets the criteria of the sponsorship policy? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Then we can just make people aware of our sponsorship policy yeah. and yeah. what we offer to organizations through sponsorships. Yeah. And a lot of these would have, uh, <clears throat> the Multicultural Association would be participating in some of these as well, or most some, of these. Yeah. yeah, so they engage yeah. with. 
Patrick on a regular basis about events that are going on. Yeah, I mean, Canada Day is a great example of an event where half the day is multicultural festival yeah. programming at the museum, and we've got a great partnership with that organization. And uh, they certainly do a number of other events throughout the year that I think it uh, makes sense for the town to support. Yeah. 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 Okay. And we also, if we do it that way this year, it gives us a little bit of a lens on what? what to expect for next year right. so if it has to become if we have to increase our sponsorship budget or, yeah. or create a another line so you have Chris on the hay if you have mm -hmm. Canada Day and if you have cultural festival line item mm -hmm. it'll give us a clearer picture of what that budget needs to be we've probably got the most diverse committee in the town uh, with different <laughs> groups represented there and this is where this stuff comes out of discussion and uh, Everybody loves Bridgewater, and they're thankful for what they do, but we're just trying to work with them to do a little bit more you know, yeah. with their help. Other questions around the budget? Councilor Caldwell. I'll go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, um, <clears throat> oh, the, um, so there was some questions last week about the, uh, the temporary lights on King Street. On yep. North, North King Street. Mm -hmm. So, were those? Um, have we submitted, submitted an application? I know we've submitted an application for disaster re relief funding. Um, would those be included? Yeah, that that would be a cost. That so, I don't believe they've d finalized all that funding, right, Kim? No, we haven't heard anything. Yeah, but we're tracking that as a cost that we, that if, would if be eligible, included. yeah, we'll okay. be including that. Okay. Yeah, that was. I think that was under engineering. Yeah. Did you have others, Councillor Carla? Do you want to go through some? Sure, of your, if you want yeah. me to go. Yeah, yeah, I've got a laundry list here. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, I did not see. I'm sure it's there. Mm -hmm. I did not see in the budget where the LCLC deficit was accounted for. So the LCLC deficit will be funded out of this year, the tw the year that just wrapped up, 23-24. Okay. So yeah. there's a deficit of roughly 200 and. I can't remember um, the exact. In the actual, yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's some in PSC as we well. We need to so come up to that. Come on down. <laughs> so it's, it, there's a couple hundred thousand dollar deficit, and there will be a, a motion coming from the, the board with respect to that. But um, that would be funded out of the 23 24 right. um, budget. So it would be, we were projecting a surplus, which you'll see in the third quarter report that Kim presents on the 8th and uh, so th that overage would be accommodated through that. Yeah, we've accumulated quite a bit of costs from from the floods and so with no word on whether there'll be any funding for us, we we're just going to fund it from operations. Fortunately, we weren't in a deficit position and we can absorb it and hope that we do get some funding to recover that later so we can put that back into capital or reserves. Yep, that's fine. Uh, you want me to go again? Yeah. We're done with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, may I jump to capital budget? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I so I thought that uh, we were going to budget for something for speed calming measures. I didn't see it there. That doesn't mean I could have missed so, it. Um, I'll refer to Matt on that. I know staff are working on a report on traffic calming measures. And what may be in the budget this year, if it would be an operating expense as opposed to capital? <clears throat> For speed humps, bumps, pillows. So thankfully, I've had uh, three of the four positions filled. Uh, the en new engineering services manager has been tasked, probably one of his second task, I guess, I gave. Uh, gave him would be to do some re do some jurisdictional scan on what other areas are doing for traffic calming measures. Um, you know what those solutions can they be employed in the town of Bridgewater? Sometimes they're not as uh, cost effective in our in our area compared to maybe Montreal or, or Halifax, whatnot. So um, I hope that they he will he'll be able to provide some sort of a report uh, in due time, both to myself and Tammy, to kind of say are we on the right path. Uh, and then come to council with kind of uh, uh, solutions that could fit. 
uh, and a procedure to follow uh, for those. So in terms of the implementation itself, um, by the time we worked up through that process, uh, we're probably going to be around October-ish, uh, which leaves us only a couple months of, uh, of paving if that was one of the solutions we're going to look into. Uh, so we feel that we can probably do that through operations or uh, if there are any remaining funds through pavement management program. Okay. So that's the hope. I should have okay. got that yeah. quicker. But anyways. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Good. <clears throat> You're, oh, well, okay, Deputy Mayor, for sure. We'll I just had a, <laughs> a clarity question for um, revenue distribution in the pie chart. Um, like there's, I um, have to refresh my memory as to one is, uh, mentions 3% unconditional transfers from other government and then there's 3% conditional transfer. What's the difference between Conditional and unconditional, uh, what that would be. Sure. So conditional means we have to do something in exchange for it. Okay. And unconditional means we get it and we don't have to spend it on anything in particular. Okay. So our um, equalization for, uh, hmm. forget what it's actually called right now. Um, equalization is, we can spend that on whatever we want to spend it on. It's a grant to the town to operate okay. as opposed to, um, Gas tax isn't tax. a good example, but that's when okay. we have to spend on something specific. Um, summer students, we have to spend that on summer right. something okay. very specific, so that's conditional. Okay, um, it Makes requires sense. us to do something specific with those right. funds. Financial okay. capacity grant, that one. Yes. Yeah. So there's parameters right. that with the conditional, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So that's kind of, they're both grants. It's just in some cases the. Um, the conditional sometimes get carried over to another year. There's all kinds of stipulations around okay. the use of those. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions? Councilor Thorburn? Same old question. <laughs> Just a different year. Um, I'm really concerned about this education increase of uh, $241,000. Uh, we <coughs> lost some enrollment <coughs> in students a couple of years ago, two or three years ago. And that doesn't really uh, pay for the correctional services and the regional housing money that we paid out of 236.5. So we're still in a deficit of, of pretty much six thousand dollars. And they gave us money. Without that, we'd have been 241 thousand dollars more. There must be a, a proper time and a place where this can be discussed because it's getting very expensive. Our enrollment's down, but it keeps going up because it's tied to Uniform assessed assessment. value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I really think we should be pushing to get that capped instead of each year just giving them some more, a couple hundred thousand dollars. That money could be spent in Bridgewater. Mm -hmm. hmm. <clears throat> Assessment is an interesting formula to use to fund education versus yeah. the actual use of the education system. It assumes ability to pay, I guess. But, no, but I mean, yeah. our enrollment is down when we lost our high school. Yeah, and, and the school was probably half empty then, or not? No, it's full now. Actually, it's it's awesome. full, but not full with students. Yeah. I think it's pretty yeah. full. It's pretty I think, I think yeah, we're max. The trend students. is changing. It yeah. is changing. Yeah. 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 Okay, but I, 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 that concerns me. That it's pretty near a quarter of a million dollars, and yeah. we get that money very hard, and it goes back on our property tax owners, and, and then we're just giving it back out. Mm -hmm. It's been, I think it's been an issue that's been raised with NSFM and NSFM has raised it with the province in terms of looking how, at how we fund some of these services. <coughs> that's well, I would suggest we give back the correctional services money and the regional housing money and they take us off the hook for the school increase each year and we save some money. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it's... It, it, when I first was on council, it was only a little over a million dollars, and, and now it's up two and a half million. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah, big, enough said. big jumps, big jumps for sure. Other questions, Council Colley? Have any more questions? Yeah, sure. Um, so I had some questions based on the. So I guess it's the budget overview document. I think what we have up is the budget highlights. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So this thing just. I guess they're mostly just clarification, so I understand some of these things. 
So page 38, um, Recreation Administration. Just there's a large increase in... Uh, yeah, so I'm going to have to... Patrick, are you able to control the slides? Uh, yes, I, I can... Here we go. Jessica okay. can speak to Recreation yeah. Administration, but um, I believe if we say the words Hemlock Willie Adelgid, that will ring some bells. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's what I thought it was, yeah. but I just yeah. want to make sure. It's in yeah, the I think it's in the um, additions, deletions for recreation. He was looking at the budget overview, so the number in there. Yeah, administration yeah. and support, I guess, are up. And that's what I thought it was, but yeah. I did want to clarify. Yeah, it's the Hemlock Willie Adelgid. Okay. The total project budget for the... the 425 fiscal year is 159,000. We're hopeful to get 134 in grants. Right. We still don't know yet. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Yeah. Uh, so page 29, traffic uh, traffic services. There's a large variance. I'm wondering if that's King Street. King Street. Uh, temporary what's lights. The, what's the heading? Page 29, uh, traffic services. How about the slide heading? Uh, the budget oh, he's, document? He's in the main budget document. Oh, okay. Engineering. Okay. I'm in the budget overview document. Yeah, so uh, the base, adjusted baseline was 179,400 going to 256,900. Is that the one you're looking at for traffic services? Yep, yes. Yeah. Just one sec here. Yes, yeah, so there, there's a baseline of 179,000, which is just kind of over what was projected for 23-24, <coughs> and the $80,000 is for the temporary lights. Okay. It's engineering services. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Um, 21, economic development, is also a large increase. Page 21, sorry. So that's under the admin. Okay. One, so there's so an, Tammy, there's an addition of 182,800 under the, um, economic development, which is in your admin one. Mm. Yeah. So we have <coughs> under the economic, there was the clean fuel feasibility and assessment of 135,000. Right. So that's got an offsetting grant. So we, we did advise council of that. Yeah. So there's funding to offset that, but we have to show the expend expenditure mm -hmm. of that. I believe our cost is net around um, 15,000 or thereabouts. So everything else would be covered through grants. So that's the big portion of that. Uh, we also have marketing promotion at 20,000. So that's for strategy and branding. Um, that would be um, located within that. There's some, if it's under economic development, I don't think the TOB advertising's in there, but this, this slide here that you have on your screen shows you all the additions that are within that. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, just one more, I think. Um, so what external funding assumptions are made regarding future debt ratios? And the capital? Yes. <clears throat> so we do, we do have some, uh, some assumptions about um, funding that for wastewater. Um, and those, so that's significant dollars. If we're not able to achieve that funding, then we'll have to bring the capital budget back to council mm -hmm. so that the debts are, and, and do some adjustments. Um, what that'll mean is that it'll take us a lot longer to get to a point where we're able to accommodate growth, um, but um, we'll have to adjust the budget because you won't be able to sustain the debt service ratio that would be involved if we did not have that funding. In yeah, place. and these are from these assumptions are from mul multiple sources. There's a couple sources of yeah. funding there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, other questions from council? Probably the, the biggest question I have is, it, maybe it's a Matt question. So um, I know this, paving is always a challenge for us, but I also really notice when I'm driving in other communities that this year has, seems to be uh, particularly bad. Um, I notice, it's, and, it, and it's not a Bridgewater thing, obviously. You try driving into the city and large swaths of the highway are missing. Um, and you have to just keep having to change lanes as you miss sections of road. But um, do you feel with the kind of increase in, I don't know how else to phrase it, damage that we're seeing um, in the roads, do you have enough money in the pavement management budget 
And then if the answer is more would be nice, that then begs the question, would you, do you have the capacity to do it? Because I know that one year we like doubled the pavement management budget and then learned the following year that we didn't do any of the extra work because we had we have capacity issues. So and maybe you've already baked in this increase increase amount of potholes to fill. Um, I think the answer kind of remains the same as it was previous years. Uh, I think that uh, certainly we all live in Bridgewater, so we, the, the roads are have been impacted, um, and there are some there's probably a lot more work that staff would like to do. Uh, it does come down to resources to complete. Um, so we typically do our work. We do our spring assessment, which would develop our tenders uh, with hopes that we get bids um, and those uh, with the execution of work likely in August um, and then paving, uh, or sorry, in July and August so we get ahead of this, I guess mainly the school new renewed school year. Um, I know in other years we've tried a second phase of work depending on how the tender results come in. Um, it has been challenging to do the work in the fall, um, so I probably have to give it some more thought. I don't. I, I almost half wish there was a little bit of a reserve. So if we found out there was an opportunity, maybe do a little bit more. But I know that um, the what we've discussed at this table would be, you know, the six hundred thousand dollars that we put in plus the capital projects that we plan to do is kind of the, probably the most we could handle at this point. Um, but I know that there's, uh, you know, it, it, it's almost like, oh, okay, there's some free time, not free time, but there's an opportunity. We'd like to jump on it. Yeah. And, you know, they, not that they come along often, but it's how we manage that. So hopefully uh, we are lucky uh, this tendering and we're able to do a little bit more from a, a pavement perspective within the budget. Uh, if there's an opportunity that arises, uh, I think it's staff's duty to come to council somehow. Uh, to, to inform you there may be an opportunity to do more and, and maybe there might be money there. I, I, it's hard to say every year is a little different. Yeah. And we do have Pearl Street and Empire. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, um, there, uh, there's one last section of, uh, I guess, Pearl Street Empire and St. Philip Street would yeah. be. All in addition to what's right. in yeah. the pavement line. Right. So there's quite a bit of pavement yeah. in the actual budget, yeah. just not all in that one line. Right. I guess I would say. Yeah, I mean, I believe that was Councilor Thorburn's uh, comment last year is that yeah. the we've already built repaving into other projects, um, which is nice. Um, but I know that uh, to answer the question, you know, I think we would all like to see more done. It does come down to a capacity, okay. uh, resource, and, and funding perspective. So, um, yeah. but uh, we we do plan to do our assessments and to come up with our short lists to develop the estimates. And normally, by the time we do our estimates and then we get tender re results, we almost have to cut our short short list um so i know that there's roads we've had to drop off just because of funding so there might be um that opportunity to come back after the tendering to say if we don't have sufficient funds and we still want to do that the short list maybe we ask for council for, for additional funds then yep. might be an option and that would have to come from reserve funding yeah. to do that like yeah. right now there's i think nine hundred and twenty thousand in our capital budget excluding st philip street so you'd be well over well over a million dollars in in pavement this year. Okay. <clears throat> Tammy, we've had discussions with the province off and on about their cost sharing some of our collector streets like King Street, yeah. and the Hay Street. So where are we at with that? Because that would certainly give some more extra money to get some stuff done. So they did come out. I think it was a couple of weeks ago with respects to that to say you can apply. Um, the, the pot's very small, yes. um, so you have to write, it has to be one of the, the like the King sure. Street that runs through, yep. um, and um, they would uh, then decide what, what if you would qualify, and then it doesn't do curb or sidewalk or sure. any of that, it's just the straight paving. Yep. So when we look at our, then it, it can't be like patching, it's got to be no. a job. No. Um, so when we look at those streets, um, we'll be looking, you have to look out, you know, apply a year in advance yep. so that they can then um, decide whether or not you qualify for them to help you with some of the funding. I can't remember the exact 
percentage that, that they give you um, if you qualify, but I do know the pot's not that large for the entire province. So that's one of the changes they made was yeah. we, we were always pushing, you raise this every year, of, of towns don't have a pot of money to do those collector streets right. that are part of the, the you know, lighthouse route or whatever yeah. mm -hmm. those. Um, so they made that change, but they put us in the pot with every municipality across the province. Small. So where we thought, I, th I think we all thought we were heading down this road of there'll be a, a town pot of money because yeah. rural communities already have a pot. And instead, they grew the pot a little bit, but added everybody. Okay. So it's it's. And, and I know for rurals, they have, I think it's two million in total, and that includes municipal contribution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, the there's not a lot being achieved under that fund, okay. or will be able to be achieved. Okay. We'll <coughs> apply where we can. Yeah. Um, speaking of that, though, I know people have asked about the new bridge that. Obviously, the bridge itself, the pavement on the bridge is, is provincial. Mm -hmm. So as we do any work on either side, do you converse with the province to see if, and let them know, obviously, the condition of some of the sections of that bridge? So um, staff, well, I guess I shouldn't say, myself, I made an appointment, uh, I made a meeting with uh, Nova Scotia Public Works to discuss their plans uh, for the Veterans Bridge. Uh, to hope that we can, it mainly was spurred by the request to move LaHave Street up. So if we, at least if we could time one side, it would be really good um, because there has been a significant amount of complaints with respect to the expansion joints, yeah. uh, which mm -hmm. was their responsibility about how we tie in. So, um, you know, I do have a meeting set up, I believe it's April 9th, um, just to just discuss what's their plans over the next, this year and next and the following to kind of see if we can align our capital works with them at least for one side of the bridge. That would be nice, especially if we if we do pass this budget and we make the changes that we talked about, about that yeah. turning lane on the Hay Street. Yeah. You'd hate to yeah. do all that work and then next summer, and then the following summer they close it again to do their work. So, so that would be part of when we uh, work through the design for uh, the Have having those conversations with the Department of Transportation, because at this point I'm not exactly sure where the line is, where they stop and we begin, uh, but making sure we know what that is and if there's the opportunity to do up to the expansion joint on the uh, on the east side, then we'll do it, and then it's not part of DOT's work, but and we'll work out that funding accordingly, I assume. Uh, but hopefully we uh, we don't want to repeat to go back to that intersection when we're done because oh. it is a it will be a uh, it's a challenge to work in anywhere near our major intersections. Other questions, Councillor Cole. Um, I, I will say I like the idea of a reserve fund for pavement, and if there is an opportunity that to do a little extra, there is funding there. But, you know. Yeah. So we we have um, operating reserve right now, and we have. So capital reserve is usually more specific to project. Um, so you do have the flexibility in an operating reserve on an annual basis to, to if, if an opportunity arises, to say we'll fund that out of operations. We may also, partway through the year, one project might not materialize, we might not be doing that. So there's always an opportunity to kind of look at what we're forecasting and projecting. So it's just redundant to have such a... Reserve? Yeah. Um, I mean, you can lock it into pavement and then when you do that, it's not flexible. So if council mm. wants to spend it on something else, they don't. It's set there for paving, and the only way you can change that is by motion. Mm -hmm. So it, it's meant to be really like you're, this is what yeah. we want it for and yeah. only this. So you, you can certainly do that, or you can leave it more flexible so that you um, can uh, use it for other things if the need arises. Good. Well, I think, I think that council agrees if there was an opportunity we'd at least um, consider that and I, I think that staff understands that too then yeah. Yeah. yeah other questions we've got a bunch of senior management here mm -hmm. so we also yep. had the um, sewer rate yep. And so we do, we did, this, this presentation's only been changed to add that in. Mm -hmm. So let's find that. I want to make sure that the, the fire chief gets his <coughs> 20 minutes to do whatever he, his presentation is. So I believe he's here in the event you have questions. <laughs> We're just going to make up questions. <laughs> I would note that also included in your agenda is also the LCLC 
uh, recommendation from yeah. the board as well as the police advisor or police commission um, recommendation as well. Those numbers have all been incorporated into this budget as well. Um, so wastewater. So yes, yeah, so wastewater. There was some discussion about the hospital rate, the base rate, um, and <clears throat> staff had proposed ten thousand, and and with the bids, I think it, it equaled seventeen thousand one hundred. Mm -hmm. So Kim was asked to kind of take a look at the previous report that was done in twenty nineteen because there was a reference to a seventy two thousand um, dollar charge, and kind of provide some information to council with respects to what it what it would actually look like based on their their water consumption and was it the seventy two thousand or thereabouts that was suggested in twenty nineteen. So Kim did a little work on that. And that's on this slide here. So maybe Kim can explain that. Yes, so I think um, when council had looked at the slide presentation it implied that the rate for hospitals in their model was seventy two thousand three hundred and twenty five dollars. I can't come up with that number anywhere. Um, I have their draft report that goes along with the, the slide presentations. And in that draft report were three years of proposed rates with a mostly base rate and then moving up with consumption. And specifically for the hospital, those rates range from $7,700 to about $32,000. But at no point does it ever get to $72,000. i am I'm not sure if they had a typo or added multiple things together. I, I, I don't know where the number came from on that slide, um, but they specifically in their modeling had identified South Shore Health specifically each one of the years. So the calculation was there um, at the water consumption rates they were assuming. Um, so I can't speak to the 72,000, but I can say in their modeling, it ranged um, with a maximum of $32,000. Um, so I took their last five years of water consumption um, and that five-year average is about 10,000 cubic meters less than the figure they used to calculate the 32,000. Um, and if I use that at the rates they proposed, um, that new lower cubic meters, um, their rate would have came out to about 26,000. And so, as you recall, I think we had noted, you know, that hospital was paying $1,100 plus a small amount per bed. Um, a couple years ago, and last year we increased it to, I think, just under $5,000 plus $79 per bed. And this year we're proposing a significant increase again. Um, and that will get them up into the $17,000 range, which is heading towards the $26,000 they would have from a consumption based. Their consumption kind of goes up and down a little bit. That's why I kind of just used a five year average because it, it had a, a bit of a broad range. When you look at it, I'm, I'm not sure what the reasoning was. Did we probably have some COVID years with less surgeries and less things going on at the hospital that might be skewing it a little bit? That's why I just went with the five-year average because I can't um, make any assumptions about why it's up and down a little bit. But um, it gives you an idea of where they would be under the rates that were proposed in the model as opposed to just that one slide, which I can't attest to um, where the value came from. They might have added a couple things together. I I don't know. Councilor Tanner. So Kim, I guess on that note, um, if we were using the consumption methodology, then you would suggest that the bill would be $26,000 for the coming year, yes. which is going in the right direction. Um, do we at all account for the expansion that's going on there for this coming year? No, no, Just no, because it, it, yeah, it won't. Estimate. It's not in, you know, the bed count isn't there, and it's, you know, as of if we look at the assessment role, it's based on a December 1st value, so yeah, we no wouldn't fair. normally assess the sewer mm -hmm. based on, even if they had the beds in place on April 1, because we're looking at the tax year 2013, or 2023, sorry. So um, is it possible to go out and, and reach out to the consultant who did that report? Because that's a substantial <laughs> number, or... A substantial yeah, it, it's so long ago that I just assumed they wouldn't have wouldn't any. I have their draft. Okay. I have their report, so I assumed the report with the calculations was the accurate yeah, one, okay. um, and just didn't bother going back. I looked at the consumption. I recalculated it. You know, their model is right. The slide. I don't know whether they added 
educate like it's like they combine something with hospitals but i don't know what it would be because they just give you some examples of where the rates would be like on a select mm -hmm. bunch in the model itself so if they were using numbers that weren't displayed in that model i it, it's just a guess so i think mm -hmm. it's safe to say the seventy-two thousand might have been referenced to something else but definitely not based on what i have for the hospital huge difference though yeah. <laughs> yeah. Councilor Conklin. Um, okay, so yeah, um, Councilor Tanner mentioned that yeah, we're going in the right direction at seventeen thousand one hundred for a proposed annual charge. However, um, still shy of your figure of twenty six thousand. So, any reason in particular why we are not looking at that twenty six thousand? No, Instead we've been increasing it fairly aggressively compared to the residential and commercial units so yeah. it's really up to council where you want that to go we provided a yeah. an estimate that would get us going more strongly in the mm -hmm. right direction any increase <clears throat> from the rates that we have shown would result in additional funding into the wastewater reserve yes it would be going yeah. in the reserve yeah, yeah. Councilor Tanner. So, <laughs> to Councilor Conklin's point, I mean, I propose we we do move up to the twenty-six thousand dollar number, primarily because one, I think we're not quite there yet at seventeen, but also, um, uh, you know, with the expansion and everything coming on board uh, this calendar year, I assume that we're going to be there anyway with the consumption piece. So. Yeah, I'm not sure what their timeline is yeah. for opening, but um, when it does, that's why the bed count will get us, you know, because we have a rate per bed, if their additional beds are open, it will yeah. automatically put the rate up. No, by much. I don't know how many beds are proposed. Okay. okay. Yeah, I can't remember how many. There's I don't 60 want to or 70 beds in the, in the estimate. So you're proposing we go to the 26,000 this year? Yeah, that's Calkins so, proposing yeah. the same? I don't know. Feeling around the world. I'm around the world. Well, I'm feeling around the world is. <laughs> let's ask. Uh, be another. Well, the meeting won't, still won't be as long as last week. <laughs> Councillor Kawa. I guess my only hesitation with that is that we don't actually know if that's the actual twenty-six thousand is the actual number that they should be charged, right? I mean, it's yeah, just I a, know what their consumption range is, but you know, until we redo the modeling. It could come out to a higher or lower number, probably, you know, but this is based on the information we have in the report as for where they thought rates should be. But that's based on their water coming in, not water going out. That's right? correct. Right. So, yeah. I don't know. We don't have a way of measuring the water going out. Right. So I think we're, we're making assumptions that, mm -hmm. so I mean, in, if that's the case, I prefer to have an interim charge of 17000 and then go up more next year with hopefully some more I don't know I think we can never we're, meet we're out. we'll never have. know what yeah. goes out yeah. Yeah. So the only the only option without them choosing to meter right. their mm. outflow and that's yeah. an, until we move to that metered model where we're we're billing based on meter we're, we're looking at consumption numbers now but residential commercial aren't done on that meter right um, it until we meter that there would probably wouldn't be an opportunity for them to turn around and suggest that they're measure the water going out themselves to provide that argument that it's actually lower going out than coming in um, it may be very much more than what the meter shows it's hard to say um, <clears throat> but until you move to that model this is just a rate yeah right Councilor Thorburn I would propose that we increase that to 15. That would give us uh, 22 one, which is more in the ballpark of the 26, and see what next year brings, and then we increase it again. At the base rate to 15? Yeah. And then 100 per bid? Still the 100 per bid, because yeah, that 26 is approximately, and we know we're in the park with that. So I would support that. I guess the way I look at it, um, we did fairly aggressively increase the uh, residential rates for the second unit, like for apartments and whatnot. Um, and um, 
I think we still have room to go on schools um, and also on uh, some of these new categories. But really, um, <coughs> it's a five-year average that you're using, right? And um, for the hospital, and two of those years were impacted by COVID. So, if anything, that's probably a fairly conservative estimate at twenty-six thousand. You know, it, it, I don't know what drives their water consumption. Yeah. You know whether it's surgery, number of patients, and the, like I, I really don't know what drives their yeah. water consumption. But basically, like you, you've painted all the all the categories with the same brush, more or less, right? When we coming up with a uh, a rate for the particular um, type of uh, of building or um, for or commercial customer. or yeah, I mean, residential is hard because every home is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, but on the commercial side, I've definitely done some calculations to see who our high water consumers mm -hmm. are and trying to get those rates up to be a reasonable sewer flat rate sewer rate um, based on knowing what their water consumption is. So we're addressing some of those through the large commercial, through the car wash, through the gro large grocery stores and ones that we can easily identify as high water consumers. Um, and then based on an assumption that water in is equal to water out because we don't know, we can't assume anything else at this time. So, you know, we've been moving them all up mm -hmm. and I think, you know, we're just taking that approach of getting them all to be paying a little more fairly based on water consumption, but knowing we only have a flat rate model to work with right now. Yeah. The, uh, the various wastewater rates mm -hmm. cause council a lot of consternation every year, I'm sure staff yeah. too. Is there anything that council could put in the budget to help speed up the process of getting us to a, a state where we have some more accurate information to set these rates? So th there, there was a recommendation by the consultants to move to a metered rate. Mm -hmm. um, and. A, Kim identified for council some of the barriers to mm -hmm. us moving there because it's not that's not a one size fits all. Mm -hmm. So we have to work through a few of those things. I believe we we're waiting for engineering to be resourced with the position that we lost so that Kim could sit down and work with that that person about some of the logistics behind how do we how do we treat this particular situation where <laughs> their meter size might be different than it you know not what it should be or land lease communities with one mm -hmm. meter that t master meter that type of thing and how do we rate that um, so i believe the plan was that this year we would work through those barriers um, assuming that we stay resourced up that we could could do that and so it won't require anything extra you should be not, not i believe kim has some funding in there to look at bringing whether it's Blaine and Jerry or some others in to kind of help with some of that work. We have to do a rate review as well, so we'll probably... Water study. So we'll be yeah. working with them, and yeah. I think the approach is to, to work with them on, you know, looking at the whole sewer model um, utility situation. So as we work with them on a water rate study and yeah. kind of next steps, um, then I think we'll get a better direction on how, when, timeline, but we definitely just have some logistical, structural issues to work through. Um, and so the engineering services manager, or um, environmental services manager, sorry, um, is kind of a key person in working through that. So we've had a couple of brief conversations. I think um, he's been here only about six weeks. So mm -hmm. we haven't gotten deep into that. But okay. I think you know we'll be forming a bit of a committee of staff to get that, to start working through those. Okay, good. Uh, in terms of the, the hospital one, I was, I know last year I was hesitant to move up too much. Uh, and, and this year I've changed my tune a little bit, just mostly because I think last year we looked at <laughs> if it's going to go to 70 something thousand dollars, it's going to be a bit of a an issue. But um, if you're doing calculations based on average consumption, recognizing that you know, it might not be 100% water in, water out, but it's pretty close. It could be 95% water in, water out. And I would imagine that uh, 
the treatment of water coming from a hospital is very costly in terms of the resources that it takes versus single family dwelling. Um, I certainly I certainly don't have any objection um, moving to the twenty six thousand dollar number. Um, as I looked down the road and kind of the conversation we had be before the meeting started of, of how we for years held the line certainly on a, uh, from a tax rate perspective out of fear of raising the rates that have now caused this tsunami of wastewater infrastructure pressures on the town. Mm -hmm. So if it's going into reserve and it helps <coughs> cushion the blow down the road, I'd rather build up those reserves now because I'm I am legitimately concerned mm -hmm. um, if inflation doesn't get into check if costs of tenders keep coming back in you know in some cases a hundred percent over what we thought they were going to be um, I'm worried that we're we're not going to have the reserves we think we're going to have to cushion the cushion the blow from those increases great that we're I'm, I'm always confident we're going to get the funding because you know when you talk to ministers at all orders of government they recognize the role that Bridgewater plays certainly not just in the South Shore in the economy of the South Shore but the economy of the whole province so I don't think anyone's going to let us down in that regard but I also know that every funding agreement we enter into has a municipal component mm -hmm. nobody is giving us 90 cent dollars so um, if this helps us build that reserve I would I would support getting there now um, going back to, I think what Councilor Calkin said, I think it was Councilor Calkin talking about the residential rate and the secondary, the additional s residential sewer rate, and we we did increase that last year and this year. Um, so it's probably time for the province to, mm -hmm. through the health authority, to pay a little bit more based on consumption. So that's just my my two cents. If there's a willingness to. I'd rather be the hospital than the the other people who have also seen a significant increase. Mm -hmm. Councilor Tanner, um, <coughs> somewhat related, but what's the um, how much time do we have left in the wastewater treatment plant so as a whole? It's being assessed. We're now, doing that. Yeah. We're doing a condition assessment right. right now. There is a capacity limit for the wastewater treatment plant of ten thousand people. Yeah. So okay. we're, we're, we're getting close to that, but the condition assessment that will be completed May, June of this year, it's presently underway, will give us a little bit of insight into the condition of, of that plan. And has that at all been factored into the wastewater? Into the t well, the wastewater rate yeah. is uh, based not, on... Not the wastewater rate, oh. but the wastewater... Plan. Capital like our, plan. Our capital yeah. plan or infrastructure. Um, there is some wastewater treatment plan improvements in there, um, but it's based on what we know today as opposed to what right. that assessment might come back with. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, so we'd have to build that in. Yes. Yes. Okay. Just another excuse, unfortunately, to more reserves. Yeah. More reserves. Yeah. Councilor Conklin. Um, okay, the slide that's up here uh, now uh, at the bottom municipal sewers, residential. Mm -hmm and for commercial. Um, do we have rates as well for the additional, like if there's an additional residential or additional commercial? Like unit in one building? Mm -hmm. Yes, those are there. So the first one called residential sewer rate of 518, and then the next row down is additional residential sewer. I think he means those yeah, the bottom but at, at the bottom there, well, Kim, uh, for, for municipal? Outside of, outside of the town. Oh, outside the town. ones for outside? Yeah. Um, well, so what was the question okay, again? So, the numbers so are there. Say, let, okay, so what oh, one of these... They pay full. They get no discount for additional units, sorry. Okay, but they pay for the additional unit. Yeah, so yep. same yep. same amount. Yeah, yep. so okay. they don't get any yep. any sort of discount for additional. That's just the... Okay. And previously it was about 20% higher than our base rate. Like our, our rate is 518 for in-town, and 624 was about 20% higher. Um, I'm proposing they'd be 30% higher. That's why you're seeing it go to 673, but our residential rate staying the same. Mm -hmm. Councilor Thurman? Well, let's talk about the large industrial. We had a good talk about the hospital. We had a good talk about <coughs> residential municipal sewers. Uh, 
let's really talk about the large industrial and is that $20,000 anywhere near what it should be? If it's not, then I think we are obligated to do something about it. So there's a, I guess there's a few things there is one, um, water in does not equal water out for that particular operation. Yep. Um, there have been some conversations about can you provide us with that number. Okay. Um, it's not easy, it's easier said than done. Right. Just given the structure and the complexity of that to sometimes provide that information. So we haven't received that from them to understand what the water out consumption is. They're required to report that. Mm -hmm. Um, so we may we may have to to foy pop environment to get that perhaps as part of their approval, um, but um, they they do have a mandate also to reduce water consumption, and by a significant number. Okay. So that number, even if we set it at the water consumption rate today, um, next year it'll be lower, and the year after that it'll be lower sure. until it's uh, I believe it's 70 percent by 2030. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that's going to be that one is one of the ones that we have to kind of figure out how we address it because it, uh, it water is used in the process okay so but we know it's not it's not um, it's not going in the wastewater system, system. to no. this it's not equal not all of it yeah. no. water in to water out if we know it's considerable lower than it should be mm -hmm. to be responsible shouldn't we increase that number from 20 the issue is we don't know. Yeah. I think well, with we just said we know based on a, a number that the consultants provided. I think back in 2019, that that number should be considerably higher. Now that's 2019. Right. right. So, so they had just made yeah. uh, 72 thousand. An assumption. <laughs> they made an assumption that a percentage of the water in was water out, but sure. that was not based on any no. um, scientific information. But my point is we know it's considerable higher than 20. Yeah. And we've already so taken the hospital to pass because it's approximately, is $20,000 a fair amount to charge this large industrial customer? That's my question. So what or was the amount be higher? that the consultant, and we're saying that it, in all likelihood it would be higher. Um, but Kim, do you have the number that was provided in 2019? I can. Yeah, and, and I would it. note that right now the bill is a thousand dollars, one thousand one hundred nine dollars. So it's significantly well, my, my lower. My two than sewers add up pretty to that much. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's waiting for it to load up. Yeah. Just decided it was <laughs> gonna not operate. <laughs> I might have it in last year's presentation. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Do um, you see it there? 117, two, 290 for major industry. That was from the, um, oh dear, from the consultants from a number of years ago. And I think at that time we were charging um, 2700 So they adjusted the, the flow numbers considerably, like they took their water consumption and then adjusted it down. Um, I just have to calculate. The trouble is they didn't give us the actual calculations. So yeah, they went with uh, only 15% went from the system out, so mm -hmm. they assumed that 85% of it was used in their process when they did the model. And the number they used, what gave was, and then they had assumed in year, in the third year of their plan, that their bill would get to $61,000. But if they used their full water consumption, that was with, you know, no anticipation <coughs> that they were, it was getting used in a process, it would be astronomical. Yeah. It would and, be pretty high. And I think the challenge is, is based on a 2019 report and knowing mm -hmm. that, that 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 organization's been mandated to reduce water consumption annually, sure. that you can't rely on that 2019 mm -hmm. number. Which is why we did suggest that, um, did, did indicate that 
Council's given us direction to move to a metered rate. Um, that means that we will be measuring the only number we know, sure. which is water in, unless you share water out. Sure. Um, but we like to say we haven't got that number to to be able to confirm it. But, um, but based they know on we want it. what's that? They know they, that we want it. The, they know we want it, and I suspect that if they get get a, a bill much higher than last year, they might might look at that and um, understand that there is a need to um, provide that number in order it be in their best interest to do that I would mm -hmm. suggest but um, I also know that based on that conversation in the mandate the 2019 number um, is inaccurate sure yeah. so what is the suggestion we do did we well, leave at, at this point point? we don't have anything to substantiate more like 20,000 is probably um, we were looking to get some attention yeah. to the yeah. matter yeah well, make it 30 and you really get some attention. Yeah. You know, if back in 2019 it was estimated 62,000 would be conservatively low, where five years later I would think that number would at least hold its value. So consumption has gone down, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the $60,000, uh, how much has consumption gone down to relative to, to the 20,000 from the 60? Probably 25 percent. Oh, yes, it was 25 percent of 60,000. That's, that's what I'm saying. This number should be higher. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, their process has changed too a little bit. So I know that they use less. Oh, yeah. Like the the way they make the tires a little bit different. So I don't know the impact on that. Mm. I mean, ideally, they would just be presenting us with the number because they have it, right? They have a they have a meter on their outflow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they can. They could give us that number. So. Okay. Maybe fifteen. The twenty-five percent off sixty-two is around fifteen thousand off. So it'd be forty-five thousand. Forty-five thousand. Yeah. 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 But again, next year, let's say their mandate is to reduce every year to go down to seventy percent by twenty thirty. Mm. And we we know that it's going down because they they were a big revenue source for our water sure. supply. Do we anticipate getting that figure from them at a at a certain date, or I don't, I, not, I, not by this budget? The request has been no. I don't anticipate. Well, I mean, the request was made a while ago, so yeah. it's just um, you know I suspect things get in the way. Mm -hmm. There's a reminder sent, so we'll send another reminder suggesting that it's an important number for council. But mm -hmm. I wouldn't. Um, I don't think it originates from this location that number is no. in a, a more central area and um, a little harder to to yeah I don't share. think the, I don't think the, uh, the reluctance is local yeah. well, we locked up with the recipe to coca-cola yeah <laughs> yeah in Kentucky Fried Chicken. So, yeah we'll keep we'll keep pushing we'll keep to get that number yeah. No, that's why. But I thought we should have the discussion because we discussed everything else to get all the cards on the table so it was a great discussion Whatever the suggestion is, I'm, I'm happy with it. And they are going from eleven hundred dollars to twenty thousand. Yeah. So that yeah, no. that um, that should get some attention. I hope. Uh, Council McDonald and Council Conklin. If it doesn't get attention, then we have a number for next year. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so going back to that 2019 study. Um, our residential sewer rate is pretty well at the recommended rate from 2019. So uh, the the, um, the model that was produced came out at just a little under 520 per year. Um, so we have looks like we've put a lot of credence into the suggested rate for a, um, a residential user. Um, but we're still quite a ways off on um, other suggested um, rates for uh, grocery store, for example, um, it's about thirteen thousand. Uh, a hotel, twelve seven. Now, mind you, there'd be a bed charge on top of the base rate. Um, 
and school or college, it was recommended that we should be charging approximately 21.7. I feel like that slide was if we were 100% consumption, but mm -hmm. the recommendation of the consultants at the end of the day was to go with a base charge plus a consumption rate. I feel like that slide was if you went 100% consumption without okay. a base charge, but then your revenue is subject to the water consumption ups and downs. So the, rec the overall recommendation was to have a base charge plus a consumption component. That slide was what happens if. Okay. That wasn't the direction to go. So that's my interpretation of the slide, not having been here when those consultants did the work. Mm -hmm. So that one slide that you refer to is, doesn't have any of the numbers from the model they provided. That was just a presentation that those consultants did. So that slide is kind of with a grain of salt, I guess I would say, um, and isn't what they actually recommended. They were just giving you a scenario of a 100% consumption-based model, which okay. they weren't recommending. All right, so it's just a coincidence then that the residential rates uh, are Yes, the same? absolutely. And so as you're aware, we, um, prior to my arriving here, we were putting the sewer rate up, and then we've continued to put it up 20% per year, and yeah. it's completely a coincidence that we got to that number. Right on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Other questions, Councillor Caldwell? Um, another one regarding wastewater rates. I believe we made some changes so that weren't there issues with uh, home-based businesses were in some cases being charged twice? Yes. Our, our bylaw is not... Um, specific in addressing what happens if there's a home-based business and so um, when the assessment role comes in um, a, a, pro a residential property might come in with their assessment part residential and part commercial so that's how we know there's a residential and a commercial commercial component to it so the interpretation um, had always been that we needed to charge both of those rates we needed to charge the full residential and the full commercial um, and so it was our hope in um, the bylaw amendments, which hopefully you'll see a draft of at the next council meeting, mm -hmm. um, that we'll be able to address that such that um, those um, properties would only pay one of those rates. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, in all likelihood, what we would do is recommend the, the higher one. They would pay the commercial, but not the commercial plus the residential mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because we can't test to you know, some home-based home -based business, someone's just dropping something off. And in some cases, they're hairdressers with water consumption and washroom use by their customers. So we can't um, decide. So I, I had um, proposed that we just stick with one rate, not double rate for one residential unit, you know, with a small commercial component. Um, it wouldn't apply to multi-unit residential that has a commercial first floor. It would just apply to single rent unit residential with a com commercial unit on their assessment role. Right. Um, and so that'll be, um, hopefully be able to be, it's a simple sentence, but it's never been clear and it had always been interpreted as you get both charges. So we just, it has been a concern of some of our small businesses operating out of their home that they're mm -hmm. paying for both of those. So they're paying the 100, the 1109 plus the 518. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Wastewater operating capital? Just, <laughs> yeah, I, I could just tell. I could see it. Yeah. <laughs> the wheels are spinning slowly. Uh, you know, just a quick comment about the 20, 000, the large industrial 20000 versus $45,000 as an example. You know, we're dealing with a company that's had 2023 profits of $2 billion. So I highly doubt they're going to notice a $20,000 difference in a wastewater charge. Uh, that being said, we've done a lot to develop exit 12A and allow for that expansion of that particular business, which is great for the community, great for Ludenberg County, great for Nova Scotia as a whole. Um, but we've also, I think, probably subsidized their wastewater treatment for numerous years prior. So whether you move it from 20 to 45, I don't think is going to make a hill of beans difference to management at, at this particular location, but that's just me. Well, I, I, I know someone over in the corner over there that would, would support that. So we've... At least until we get the meter reading. Yeah. So yeah. I, when I did kind of a 
we haven't really gone around the room to talk about these changes, but I did, I think there were four of us that talked about the hospital one going to the 26,000. So are you proposing, along with Councilor Thorburn, a number that is the 15% less than the, 25%. or 25% less than, so $15,000. Well, they, yeah, so I mean, if their consumption has dropped in that same ratio, then I don't, I think it's probably fair to follow that same schematic with Incoming versus outgoing dropping by 25 percent. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Councilor Thorburn, you would I agree. agree with that. So, yeah. there's, there's Councilor Conklin, yes. Mm -hmm. Councilor sure. McDonald, yes. Councilor uh, Yeah, I'd, I'd say I am, especially because we've been asking for the information from, from them. And if we're not getting it, then I feel okay with it. I wouldn't be okay with it if we were just sending them a bill. But if we're asking for the information and not, not receiving it, then should have the most accurate estimate that we can. So. Okay. Uh, I, I follow suit. Um, I think it's good that we bring up the report from 2019 to sort of see where we're at. And uh, as Councillor Conklin said, about you know addressing uh, meeting our targets for the residential. Um, it's it's ensuring that we're accountable to the other making sure we're trying to play a loving level playing field here across all sectors so yeah we've got uh, those two so changes so 26 in total for a hospital that includes about $100 per bed and 45 for large industrial yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, oh, councilor john just sorry, <laughs> sorry. Okay. i mean further to that worst case this this extra income this extra revenue is going into reserves. In right. worst case, they come back saying our meter is actually reading this, and we deserve a reduction. Yes. Yeah. yeah the yeah. council okay. would have to um, approve that. Adjust yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But then we'd have the number to back it up. Yeah. We're yeah. not trying to gouge here. Yeah. We're trying no. to get to the right number. So. Yes. <coughs> yeah. Council McDonald. Um, education is mixed in with other uses as well, right? It's not. Um, we're proposing education, large grocery, and car washes go to a higher rate than the existing commercial rate that they've been paying. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so education would be um, a provincial building owned on High Street, um, as well as the local schools right. okay. in town, as well as Park Views within town as well. Okay. So we've seen an increase in the education, and is, are we getting close on that one? Um, yes, based on their water consumption, mm -hmm. it, it's definitely much closer. Okay. Because to Councillor Thor Thorburn's point, we're putting $2.5 in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's hard to put a, one category on yeah. all of them, so it's kind of an average of, of what those multiple buildings might mm -hmm. see. Um, okay. And actually, some of those are in our name because the, we own the land. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it gets complicated. <laughs> so top of our our, our tenant okay. pays the bill, but yeah. uh, technically, the it's the <laughs> bill's ours. Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Other other questions on the budget? Do you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, just that um, we, as I say, we've gone through the operating, we've gone through the capital. The capital had been adjusted just to reflect some of the more recent wastewater project costs as we've been redefining the scope of that project quite a bit over the last several months as we make application for funding. Um, we've <coughs> revised the figures to more accurately reflect what the cost would be um, based on some of our experiences with tenders. So those have all been adjusted in there, and as I say, it assumes funding. If that funding is not realized, then we will be coming back to council and slowing down our wastewater uh, project initiative and um, sourcing other ways to fund it in the future. But we, we're being optimistic yeah. and showing it uh, the way we hope it will turn out. We're not being blindly optimistic. Nope. We're <laughs> nope. working, staff are working very hard um, on this. The other thing, just to mention, and I know I mentioned it at the first presentation, is that this year we are funding more capital from operating. So that is resulting in us, um, this year's budget is a little bit lower than future years, but it results in us having to borrow less than, than the last few um, in terms of our capital projects. So next year, as Kim indicated, uh, knowing that we have some 
um, debt coming on the books, that number will go back to, I believe it's what, 2.2 or 2.3 this year, and the next year it'll go back to more like the 1.1, 1.2 million that we'll be funding from operating to fund capital, and that difference will go to pay debt, because that number will be new in next year's operating budget. So we're, we're kind of taking advantage of the ability to do it this year, but we won't see it again for a while. Is that going to give a question? Well, I feel bad for the fire department. The chief I, is here, and we really haven't had any opportunity to ask any questions. Chief, do you have your speech ready? <laughs> <laughs> Where do we stand with that review? So that review is noted as an addition. Okay. Um, it's an underwriter's review that we're doing, and also a review of the services overall. Yeah. So there's that fifth. That's what that fifty-five thousand is in there. But Mike, we haven't done the scope of that yet. Now is your time to shine. Through, through procurement yet, Come anyway. On, you, would, you would ask me a question on that. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Right now, what we've done is we're doing some preliminary stuff at the, at the hall, uh, Andy and myself, okay. getting ready for it so that we'll know exactly what we're going to be asking for yeah. and pushing it out as soon as the budgets are passed. So they got to do the scope of work. Yeah. 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 And, and, so, and what's the timeline of that overall project? Again, I can't remember. I apologize. Well, that has to be <coughs> completed by the end of the year okay. so that we know the next steps that we have to follow for the next four years to be up where we should be. Okay. You got more? Yeah, you got more, don't you? Well, are <laughs> <laughs> our, our increases in that service, your service, uh, provided for in the debt servicing ratio as we progress at all? Or how does that play out? As far as up like new fire equipment, like uh, vehicles yeah. and things like that, we buy a truck or something. <laughs> we do have yeah. vehicles in in the ten year. There's not a whole lot of them being replaced in the ten year, but we have one upcoming in the next couple. Yeah. There's one being replaced in twenty six, twenty seven. That's right. when it's supposed to arrive, right? To to pass for the underwriter study. Um, we have another one, thirty three, thirty. War, I believe it is. Okay. We have everything for the next 10 years listed how we need to be, where we need to be, including building upgrade mm -hmm. and the whole work. So, okay. We've and got but, some numbers working on them. But paid service is probably not in that. That'd be in the operating no. budget, and it's not. It's not. Not, not in anything the town has. Now, that may be, it's okay. part of that whole review to say what level of yeah. okay. fire service do you need for a town that's growing at the rate we're growing. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, that answers my question. Good. All right. Uh, thank you again to staff for uh, for hanging out with us and answering all the all the questions. Thank you again to council for all your thoughtful and thought out questions. Um, so I, I think just to summarize, yep. the, the one change we have, well, yep. two changes we have, is we will uh, change the capital budget that's being proposed to um, switch out the old bridge in La Haye for the Victoria La Haye intersection area uh, for the design and the wastewater rates will make the changes that was just suggested for the uh, 26,000 for the hospital that's the total and large industrial at 45,000. Those were the two <coughs> or the three things that we were discussed to be changed. Kinsmen, we will just do the assessment this year to determine a solution and then um, what we can revisit whether we want to pull from reserve or fund from surplus to do uh, design or wait till next year to do that as well. And the multicultural events will look at the sponsorship avenue for them. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the uh, next week, the, the final should be the final budget meeting. If you have any questions, again, reach out to staff as you have been um, to get us to, to next week and hopefully approving the budget. For the public that's watching, reach out to council, ask any questions that you have. Uh, all of us are equipped to answer them or to get answers for the public. Um, and a reminder that you know what we have in our, our budget for this year is holding the line on the tax rate. There is no planned tax rate increase uh, for residential or commercial. Um, yeah, so again, just reach out to council if you have any questions. And with that, can I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, Deputy Mayor Frazier, seconded by Councilor Thurburn. We are adjourned. <laughs>